How's it going everybody? This podcast is brought to you by Rise Make Life Workout, a health, self-development and lifestyle platform building a passionate community of knowledge seekers, creative dreamers and future leaders. For details on the latest Rise event that will feature expert speakers in the field of self-development and growth, check out www.rise-workout.com. That's www.rise-workout.com. Enjoy the show. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the High Frequency Club podcast. My name is Marwan Salerio. And I'm Sinead Beerman. We're here talking all things self-development, growth, and mindset. In this week's episode, we sit down with Les Mills international trainer and presenter, judo black belt martial artist, the Dutchman Bas Hollander. Bas talked all about how he got into Les Mills and how that's taken him all across the world and what he's learned through all those experiences. You know, something that really surprised me and I think is going to be super valuable for all our listeners is how Bas unpacks his process, his mindset, his work ethic to get him to where he is now. Like we all see him, we watch the DVDs and you think that, man, this guy's got it down packed, he's got the experience, but he really unpacks how he manages his self-confidence, the work ethic at takes to be in the position that he's at and I think we're going to get some surprises when you start to listen to this yeah definitely and lots of little tangents in there that we always love so Mm. be sure to let us know what you think once you've had a listen at the high frequency club make sure you're following along um, on Spotify Apple and YouTube awesome enjoy the show yeah bro it's it's trippy because when we started this podcast uh, late 2020 yeah we were like oh let's just you know do some goal setting and we'll think of some dream guests and you're one of those guests really and for us to be sitting here recording this right now we yeah. woke up we're like yes we finally got fast. why was that why is that um because one shanae's been a big fan of the whole les mills nice. um yeah. we've always nice. and, and you as an instructor you've got so much experience and you know you've come from japan all the way to new zealand um i'm sure that there is a treasure trove of value in your mind and experience inside well, and yeah yeah guess we'll find out now yeah. <laughs> yeah. so no pressure yeah, yeah, yeah. are we recording already yeah we're recording okay, already okay, we're okay. recording already um so bro yeah, i think a few of our listeners will know who you are but for the ones that don't did you want to tell them who you are you know where you come from what you do yeah. <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah so my name is boss i'm from the netherlands um and um i'm a group fitness instructor like you guys mm. <laughs> um and i lived lived in different places um i come from a big family um i lived in japan now i'm in new zealand and um i really like um i really like that that Doing group fitness has brought me to all these different places mm. and, and meeting so many different people. Mm. Um, yeah, well, what else do you want to know? <laughs> like, yeah. Well, I think for, for those that do know you from the Les Mills world, they probably want to know how you got into Les Mills and yeah. how your group fitness instructor journey started and where that has taken you over the years. How did years. you start? Four. I was 18 at uni. Okay, yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, just sort of... I'd, how old are you now? 28 this year okay okay so yeah almost 10 years yep. um yeah i was at uni and went through the whole drinking partying phase of yep. uni and within sort of three four months of that i was like i can't keep up with this because it was sort of an every night thing um and at the same time as i was sort of trying to cut away from that partying crowd that's when i went to a group fit class and then from the get-go i was hooked and nice. so i was going to group fit morning noon and night and mm, nice. yeah after what 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 uh, was the first program you did First class I went to was RPM, and that was oh, yeah, nice, ended up being yeah. my first program as well. Okay, nice. Yeah, and yeah, it was within six months, and the instructor was like, "Maybe you should do yeah, yeah, instructor yeah. training," yeah. and then went from there. And I was just yeah, have always taught. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And RPM was your first program. RPM was first, and then pump, and then core. Nice. And then sprint. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> and if you had to choose one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> here we go, boss. You're That's the best you had. Yeah. <laughs> I would say sprint at the moment because it's my most newest program. And okay, so okay, yeah, yeah. Then that's always like the favorite. Yeah, yeah. Are yeah. yeah. you Marvin? Um, I've been a f- group fitness instructor for I think for three years. How I got it was, I've been a PT for six years in total, and my group fitness manager Nikki Lord at the time oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
was like, you should come try this out, just try and teach. I'd never been to a group fitness class before. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you know what? Let's just try something new, because yeah. why not? Um, and indirectly, I ended up falling in love with the performance aspect of it, because I've okay. got a theater background. Oh, yeah, I like, yeah, yeah. I, like, I, I found out about that. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. I was like, you both? No, okay, no, okay. No, really, oh, okay. Yeah. And I was like, this is exactly like theatre, except I'm sweating a yeah. lot and I'm working out, you know, because you've got lines, which yeah. is choreography, yeah. and you're performing, and yeah. you're connecting with people in the audience. Yeah, and you uh, you think about how you share your message? Yeah, yeah it's or a your story. story or whatever. It's a story. Yeah. It's a story. Um, you know a funny story? Do you know Pete Manuel? Have you ever heard of, of no. Pete Manuel? He was one of the first international presenters who basically brought body pump They're, they called them I, I don't know if they called themselves but it's something like Ma magnificent four or magic four whatever uh, whatever it was it was um him uh, a pete manual uh steven renata um susan renata sort of maybe it was magic five whatever uh <laughs> emma berry and um uh pump frog God, um ah can't come up with his name um mm. uh, Oh. Maybe it was for then. No, no, one hundred percent. Like I love that guy. Like, um, uh, like his nickname. He, they called him Pumfrog. Why can't I come up with his name? Don't tell Mike. me it's Glenn Ostergaard and you forgot his name. No, 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 no. <laughs> it was the guy who led uh, Body Pump before Glenn did. Yes. Right. Um, oh, this is so like. Michael McSweeney. Michael yes, McSweeney, McSweeney is his name. Mm. Yeah. And Pete Manuel, sorry, I should have stopped just that, that Pete Manuel. <laughs> Pete Manuel came from a theater background as well, if I'm correct. Right. And um, he's like known for, like he has this beautiful voice, but he took his theater background into group fitness, basically like you were saying. Mm, mm. I, it would be so cool if there's like videos that I can send to you of some of his performance. He was so great on stage. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, for me, it was an outlet to do that because at the time nice. there was no theater for me yeah. happening. Acting took a back seat. And I was like, hey, this is the yeah. outlet for nice. me. Um, and it has been ever since. And yeah, from, yeah, that's pretty much it. Nice. Yeah. Mike McSweeney, Mike McSweeney, Mike McSweeney. <laughs> Mike McSweeney, <laughs> you if you're that. listening to this. Uh, he I know, like, I, I looked up to that guy so much and then I met him in Amsterdam and we had like a really good time. It felt, for me, it felt like that we really connected. Mm. It was so cool. And we had all those uh, uh, five people, we had we, th we had them over at our event. It was for Body Pump 100. Yeah. Um, yeah, we had the best time. Like, yeah, it was yeah. really cool. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah. how did you get started then? Um, so I used to practice judo, like uh, from a really early age um like every day like uh, we were always doing judo and then um i think um it got pretty well but then at a certain time like uh like when pu uh, puberty hit everybody started growing except me i was i stayed short <laughs> and um i had a conversation with my teacher um, with my um a trainer and he said you have the potential to become really good but because, um, because of your style of judo and your body type, like that will probably happen later on in life. Like, like mm. you're late, how do you say it? In, in late bloomer, is yeah, that like, yeah. right. in English? Um, so, and that was like around like my 18th birthday and I, I was kind of gutted because I've trained my whole life. And then like, and then he said, maybe you should just try something else. You've always done judo from your fourth year to like, mm. you're now 18. Maybe try something else. Like we're starting this, uh, he called it Les Miles or whatever. Like um, we're gonna do this because we're trying to get some more people into the gym. Maybe you should just teach it. And I was kind of skeptical because I've never done that. Uh, mm. But then RPM was my first program as well. Yeah. And I remember doing that first class. I was 18 and very nervous. But I remember that I loved it because I wasn't training for myself anymore. All of a sudden, um, I saw people enjoying the class or like from really big things like a uh, uh, person didn't like exercise and came now to all my class, you know, or to um, just a smile like he, that person enjoyed the class. And But all of a sudden, my focus shifted from me training judo and getting fitter and getting stronger and getting quicker than my opponent to just training and working out and, for others. Mm. And I think um, that made the shift and yeah, I went full into uh, group fitness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So RPM was number one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But as a trainer, <laughs> I, I shouldn't be saying this. <laughs> because I walked into a trap. <laughs> I know. Uh, but not as a trainer. I uh, in Holland, I applied to become a trainer for Body Step first. Oh. Okay. Yeah. That was yeah. I didn't yeah. know that. No, no, no. That was like a. Uh, yeah, I really liked the program then, and um, it suited. And um, but I'm not doing that anymore. But that was my first program uh, as a trainer. Yeah. Yeah. So what's your favorite now? <laughs> <laughs> I go through this uh, flow state. Yeah. I would say flow state, yeah. 100% ah, yeah, flow yeah. state. Yeah. Um, 
But um, no, I go through these phases. I always like the high intensity. I look always like sprint and mm -hmm. and um, uh, grit. Um, I go through phases. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So keep walking us through, bro. So you're 18 years old. You stopped judo. <laughs> you went into group fitness instructing. Then you found the passion for not just working out for yourself, but for giving to others. Yeah. Um, and then and then what happened? Where did that journey lead you? Um, with less meals, mm. folks. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I remember. So we did quarterly workshops quite differently than you, how you do them in New Zealand. In New Zealand, um, instructors go to a club and it's and it's a bigger event, but yeah. it's it's um, yeah, it can also be a full class. You know, like it's not like. But we in Holland because the logistics are so small, like our country. So we have five different locations and we rent out this big hall and it's it's actually like there's a big stage, so it it looks like. I don't want to say a proper event, like, but it's like there's a big stage, there's lighting, there's like sound, there's. Mm -hmm. So those are the the quarterlies that we run in uh, Holland, and I understand that that can't happen in many places because of like places are so far apart, you know. Mm -hmm. But in Holland, basically everything is one hour away from each other yeah. <laughs> from wherever you start. Um, and I remember to going to those quarterlies, and I just I was just thinking, hey, like those people on stage, like. I would love to do that too. I don't think I'm capable, but I would love to learn. Um, so I just, I don't know, like I think I just applied to become a trainer and then you have to do an audition. Mm -hmm. uh, first one I didn't make, I didn't make the cut. Um, I wasn't good enough. And the second one, um, I thought I'd just give it another try because I, I was motivated to see if I could take another step. Um, and then second time I applied for body step. They needed somebody in the team for that program and just like the puzzle fit together mm. and I became a trainer for the Netherlands amazing yeah amazing. yeah 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 amazing yeah. and then what and then you moved to Japan no um, then I was a trainer for the Netherlands and then I remembered that um, Les Mills Jr. and Corey Corey from uh, uh, CX uh, he ca they came over to the Netherlands when grit was launched we were one of the first countries to trial grit uh, mm. outside of New Zealand and he they ran the boot camp and um, not long after that boot camp, I was invited to come to, uh, to New Zealand for the first filming. That was in 2013. Yeah. Um, so I was like 12 or something. I don't know. <laughs> it feels like I was 12. Um, yeah, it was 2013. And I was invited for um, Grit, which I loved because up till that time, like I, I did programs that, that I really liked. I like Body Step. I like RPM. I did RPM as a trainer. But I don't think... I excelled in those, like I think I was good enough, but I don't think I was like great. Mm -hmm. um, but then Grit came along and it was like, it reminded me how we used to train for judo, you know, like short, intense, burst. It was mm. uh, um, less, how do you say, group, fitness, group fitnessy? Yeah. A little bit like... Um, More like hardcore training, like you're here yeah. to train type thing. Yeah, yeah, a little bit no nonsense, you know, yeah, like yeah. not uh, magic moments here. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. um, which I, I think, like, I, I love that side, but I think I grew out of it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so good came at the right time. Um, yeah, and then I think I was lucky enough that... Um, so when you, when you uh, film, you get like a program coach, right? Like you have a program coach. And then... Um, uh, Jackie Mills was our program coach, but she had to coach one because that was me. Because um, Les and Kirsty, they like they've done already a couple of uh, of ones, so she she was only coaching me. So we um, got to know each other quite a, quite well during that week. And um, I just offered my help. I said, "Hey, I would love to do like if there's anything I can help the organization with." And then I remember we filmed Grit on a Saturday. I had to come to the office on Sunday, and then they offered me a job. And what was that job? Um, international master trainer for Born to Move, the kids program, oh, yeah. mm. and and Grit at that stage. Mm. Um, it was sort of like that ambassador thing, but just pre-ambassador. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's how I got into. Uh, and that uh, your question was how that led me to Japan. So in that role of international master trainer, you travel to different places to teach um, new different programs, usually new programs to the trainers team, tra training teams around the world. Um, and I was asked to do a cycle training for the Japanese team. 
and that team just went through a transition guys if i talk too much like you have to tell you have to tell me <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I don't i don't like talking about so much about myself <laughs> no, no, no. Um, this is why we're here okay 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 this is okay all of a sudden this episode will be settled by holland okay i got super self conscious no, like, no, stop no, talking about yourself we're here for um, you <laughs> what are you eating for dinner um so i went to japan um and that team just went from a transition because um yeah, I think this is all quite new to New Zealanders as well. I, I don't think you guys realize how big Les Mills in the world is. I've got a little bit of because I'm from Australia originally. Okay, originally, okay. So yeah. I know that there's that. Uh, Australia probably doesn't hype it as much as like around the world, but like I, I came for yeah. Body Pump 100 filming. Okay, and yeah, yeah. So yeah. I experienced the people that, you know, were lining up and queuing up yeah. and flown from it's all It's so over the big. World. Like New like, Zealanders don't yeah. know this. When I see yeah. the, the big, like the DVDs, and you see like there is a huge warehouse yeah. and just and people like the yeah. Live. That is huge. And those were our quarterlies in Holland, but then yeah. every quarter, you know, like mm. five different places around the country. Yeah. And so, like Les Mills Live and those kind yeah. of things. Like I've been to those. So I, I understand the hype. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, um, it's it's so big all around the world and and um every region has their own trainer team mm. and in japan how do i explain this so there's these different agencies right like uh, uh australia has as as an as their agency that runs less meals in australia mm. lmap yeah yeah Asia Pacific, yeah yeah um and the agency had just shifted back to less meals international in japan so it was owned by somebody else but less meals bought it back or i don't really know how they went so they were just in this transition phase they had less meals for a long time but they basically made a restart as less meals international in japan so they needed a training manager and after that week of being there i remember them asking me you've worked with the japanese trainers who would you advise to become the next training manager so i just gave my advice i said this person was really good and i see potential for this person and then a month later i got called by the ceo and um they said we we thought about it we would love you to offer uh, we would love to <laughs> offer you the job um and i was actually in a really bad place then like i just brought, uh, well I wanted to say I broke up with my girlfriend, but my girlfriend broke up with me, in all <laughs> fairness. Mm. Um, so we were in a really difficult place, like it was a hard breakup. And I just, like, it, it just came at the right time. Like, I thought, like, I just don't want to be here in Holland anymore. Mm. Um, and, and I always, like I, I, like, I had a good time in Japan. So, yeah, that, that was how that went. I, I became the training manager of Japan. Mm. Yeah. And then how do you fill the gap from boss living in Japan, being the manager there, to you being here in New Zealand? It's been quite a shift. Mm. Um, I worked with a really big team in Japan. So we grew from 12 trainers when I started to 72 trainers around the country. Um, in those two years, that I, it was really intense. I worked really hard. Um, it was and, and then the project that I started here in New Zealand was this one man band, you know, like I'm I'm creating and of course I'm I'm getting help with so many like I'm working closely with Diana and um, it's not it's not I'm not running the show, that's not what I'm trying to say. But I did a lot of stuff by myself. I was recording videos, I was mm -hmm. editing them, I was uh, like creating stuff for distribution. Um, so working from a really big team to quite I isolated was quite a big difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And of course like it's another culture. Mm. I don't know how away you... Away from friends and family. Yeah, yeah like, yeah, yeah. yeah, you can't get further away from yeah. Holland than <laughs> yeah. I'm now. So how yeah. do you see the, the culture? What, how is the culture different from Australia and New Zealanders? Or is it quite similar? Uh, yeah, quite similar. Okay. I think definitely the Kiwi culture is way more relaxed yeah. than Australia. That was the biggest adjustment when I first came here. Instead of working, everyone was just so like, oh, you should be right and yeah. relax. And I was like, how do you get anything done if yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're not, you know, yeah, 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 working? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> But other than that, I felt I felt I sort of was able to fit in pretty yeah. quick, smart. Yeah. So, yeah. Most people overseas, from what I hear, is that they don't even know the difference between Australia and New Zealand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like the same yeah. place. Yeah, same yeah. Sort of yeah. yeah. Is New Zealand a city in Australia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, exactly. what, that's yeah. what I hear. I, I went to Australia and I, I went to Canberra and I didn't even know that that was the capital. I always <laughs> thought it was Sydney. Mm. Yeah. 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 Awesome, bro. So just going back into the instructor kind of you know journey of you've yeah. gone through a lot that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Like a long time and, and yeah. i almost had a question around when you got offered the role initially back in holland before you moved to japan what were you doing group fitness full-time or like were you um, working in normal no i was a group fitness i was the um, i was the joint uh uh training manager in holland as well before i i moved to new zealand uh, uh, sorry japan yeah so i went from like um, instructor to trainer to program coach we have program coaches mm. yeah. and then when i started to film here um, I started to work together with um, 
current training manager and like we just split the role so i was focused on uh, training and development and and she was in charge of managing the team um and and we did that um maybe like for one one and a half years together mm. um before i went to japan yeah yeah right right um I'm also engrossed in that story. I love that kind of thought. I saw that split second. Like, uh, yeah, is there more coming? Yeah, <laughs> um, uh, yeah bro. So if in hindsight now, <laughs> how long have you been in, as a group fitness instructor? Yeah, I was, because I knew that we were going to talk about this. I was driving here and I thought like half my life, because I'm, I'm 36 now, so I'm almost mm -hmm. like double, like uh, since 18, so almost 20 years. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> At what point, was there any point in your career where you're like, okay, this is what I want to do, this is it, I'm double downing on it, or were you more like, oh, I'm just going with what I enjoy and things just ended up manifesting as it is? I think so. I think that last one. I think um, I always, when, I'm, when I was in a certain position, in a certain role, um, I could see myself doing the next thing, mm. but I never really... Um, how do I say, like, um, sometimes you have people that are very determined to reach something, right? Correct. For me, it was almost like, I would love to do that, and I, I, I want to give it a try, and I'm, I'm definitely going to work my ass. Like, I've always worked really hard, but I've never thought, like, okay, I need to be in New Zealand yeah. in, with Les Mills International. It yeah. sort of evolved, and I always worked really hard in that time. Um, like yeah. never super attached to an idea. Like if it happens, it happens and yeah. I'll work at it. And I want to work for yeah. it, yes. But never like, I have to do that. No. If I don't do that, my life's over. No, yeah. no. I, I, no, I actually started as a physical education teacher and um, that was my background. And um, it just moved to Les Mills and then I became a national trainer. And the next step was like, I was asked for a video and then I, like program coach. Like it mm -hmm. sort of it was like, an, uh, like a natural evolution. Yeah. Evolution? Yeah. Mm. Evolution. Evolution. I don't yeah. know. Evolution. Mm. Evolution. Let's just say fast. Evolution. <laughs> <laughs> um, in hindsight, bro, like when you look back on yourself as a group fitness instructor when you were 18, what do you think, what strengths do you think you have carried on from then that you still have now? Like what makes Bass a really good instructor? I, raise, I, I can't answer that question. And that's not because I want to be uh, modest or something. I, um, I've always really struggled with because I don't think I'm such a good instructor. Like Interesting. Yeah. Um, I even, um, I always give the example, um, that I think there are like many people that are as good or, or better than me, um, who are just in a different space or a different role or whatever, or it didn't happen for them. I, I, it's, I don't want to be modest or something. Um, so, so why do you think you're in the position that you are in now though? Cause yeah, that's a, you really are considered one of the best and I, to think that. I, I don't know. It sounds contradicting to me. I know. I understand <laughs> what you're saying, and it and it is because I can I can add like um I can do the uh, like uh, think logic logically about it. Like if I wasn't good at what I do, I wasn't I wouldn't mm. be have been asked mm. and offered all these opportunities. Mm. So logically, it all I can like I, I like <laughs> I'm not brain dead. I can like I know <laughs> what, I understand the process here. Mm, mm. But if you like, how does it feel for me? Like. I wouldn't be able to tell you, like, I think I'm um, enthusiastic. I think I bring a positive energy. But doesn't every uh, group fitness mm. instructor do, have, uh, have that? Like, mm. yeah. It's, I don't know, like, mm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's an interesting that maybe, Like you said, a lot of it might just be timing and opportunity and... Uh, yes. To some degree. I like to think, yeah, 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 I think so. I think so, too. I think, um, and being in the right space at the right time, mm. I think a lot of... Um, Life also is, is, is luck. I think we exaggerate the um, hustle for it. And if, and if you want it bad enough, then you can get, you get to that place. I don't think that's true. I think it's at least equal, like luck or opportunity, which often sits within that luck space. I know that um, I wasn't able to choose where I'm born, where I was born. Mm. Um, um, if I would have born in a different country, I, I don't know if I would have been here. Mm -hmm. You know, if I would have born uh, with different parents, I don't know if I, if I didn't do judo, if my dad didn't think I was you, I might not have gotten the, the discipline or the, um, mm. the like, the, so many things that I didn't decide on made me what I am now. Mm. And I think we over-exaggerate this, like, if you just want it hard enough, if you... 
if you set goals and you hustle hard enough, you will get there. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's true. Mm. I don't think that's only true. Mm. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. It's almost that American dream, right? Like, mm. I just think like all the people who, who didn't get there, didn't they want it hard enough or didn't mm. they hustle hard enough or what is their, what is their mistake mm. that didn't end up? And I think it's just like, yeah, you know, like, mm. yeah. I think, yeah. It, I think and, and you can relate to that from an acting point of view. Well, like we've touched on this before when we had Rebecca on about you could be the best actor there is, but like you could try it for a movie and not get the part. And it's like, what did you not do that someone else that got it? But mm. it not, might just be that they wanted that person over yeah. you based on looks or whatever they might have been based after. Based on looks or, yeah. or something that you couldn't have controlled mm. yeah and i think there's great virtue as well in being able to detach yourself from all these external ideas and goals because a lot of it you're right you're not in control and what happens if let's say that we have a goal of i want to make x amount of money what if you never get there yeah you know does that mean didn't the, you try hard enough yeah They're like were, were you lazy then does that mean you're a lazy mm. person because mm. you if you just hustled harder you would have been there, according to the, the, the picture that is often painted in these self-help uh, self -help books, you know? Mm. Just, you need to want it. You need to really want it. And if you don't get there, you didn't want it. Mm. Uh, that's not entirely true. I think there's, it's not that black or white. So how do you approach um, your processes then? So you're more of, because I, I, I really, what I'm vibing from you at the moment is you're actually quite more relaxed with it. You're more process driven. You're more focused on um, the things that, take you there rather than the there you know what i mean yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 oh it's uh, such a difficult uh, i don't know <laughs> i don't have a really good answer for a podcast i know that it's um i i'm always able to see a clear picture i don't know if this is answering your question i i'm able to see a clear picture and i'm willing to work hard for it um Hey, I see like a uh, Dutch, the Dutch house. Oh, this is my flatmate's bookcase. Okay, yeah, there's but, a yeah. Dutch house. <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, and it's Delft blue. It's like a certain blue, <laughs> like where I grew up from. Um, you don't see the bookcase. No, I don't see the bookcase. It's all the right side. Oh, right, right, right. right. Yeah, um, I see it. The Dutch house. Yeah. yeah. Um, what was your question? Um, yeah, so I, I vibe that you're actually quite more process driven. You're more focused on the the actions that you take in the now rather than focus on this end goal yes you're more focused on on the journey rather than the destination yes when i'm yes yes definitely but at the same that's that's on a logistic like a like a logic level yes 100 percent mm. yes but feeling wise i'm always in the future like i'm always focused on what's next like it's this really weird thing i can't really live in the moment but mm. when I'm working through stuff, like when I'm working through a fit, like a filming, for example, mm. I'm always really organized. Like I, I script, I, I put in a lot of work to get my language right. Cause I, I like, I don't know if you noticed, but it's not my first language. <laughs> um, so I, like, I, I'm really process driven when it comes to work ethics. And I, 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 I want to say that I work really hard, mm. um, but f feeling wise, that's different. Mm. Yeah. Quite I like, different. I like that you touched on the filming. Oh, I had the opportunity last year to be able to be in sprint it's already filming. a year ago. Right? Bro, yeah, yeah, it's time flies. Um, and I remember finishing audition and running with you. And then within, I don't know, 20 minutes, you're on the floor doing something else. And in my mind, I'm like, man, these guys are machines. <laughs> How do you do this? And someone that I was with, they were like, oh, they've got this for the next like a week or two weeks. And I'm like, holy shit, yeah. that long. I'm real intrigued on what your processes around that is. Like, how do you upkeep your energy? How do you take care of yourself? Let's start with yeah. those two questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, I think for me, it's it sits in that process. Like, um, I know that all of my peers and friends, like, they have a really different approach. Some mm. people can just rock up, rock up, and like be great. Like, I think Glenn is an example of that. Um, he's always good, but like, I'm like, I don't know if you know this, but like, uh, when it comes to um, teaching like I'm not necessarily very confident I'm confident when I do it I think when I when I'm standing in front of a group I don't think people see me as not confident but like internally I like I wonder like what is actually good about me like why is this actually something that and I look up to all these people so my process is is really rigid like I need to know what what I'm coaching I need to know what I want to say I, I need to know that it makes sense in English and I need to learn all that and rehearse that before I can let it go Mm. So that's my process for filming. 
I make sure that I know my script like mm -hmm. inside out. And from that moment, hope, usually that happens like two or three days before filming. From that moment, I can let it go. And it doesn't matter if I say that wall is white or that is a white wall because I know what I want. But mm -hmm. to get to that point, for me, I need to re be really like, I need to spend a lot of, like put in a lot of time. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. So, uh, so you're, you're very rigid in terms of all the, the processes that come with it. Yeah. And then once you've got full confidence on that process, you're able to let it go. Uh, enough confidence. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm sure you can speak on that, right? Because you're very um, to the T yeah. in your process. Yeah. And then it was a matter for you of a journey of letting it go. For me, it was the other way around. I was like, I'm go. I've let go. Okay, yeah, and yeah, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it was Has like, oh, shit. the car and he's, I'm ready to go. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And it's funny that that works. Both yeah. work, yeah. right? Like, your process works, your process mm. works. It's just a different angle. And it, 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 it depends from person to person what you need first. Yeah. Yeah. And what you need in general, I yeah. think. I yeah, I think I'm, the, I'm like that where I need to, yeah, know everything, like know a release, like the back of my hand. Yeah. And then once I am, then I can just go in and be more yeah. relaxed and yeah, 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 yeah. Whereas if I'm still sort of in my head of being or having feeling like I need to reread something, yes. I'm just not. I would say then you don't. And maybe this is different from you acting. Like I can imagine if you act and you have to follow a script, mm. I always think you need to know the script so well. Mm. Be f for it to come out naturally mm. for, or is for, it different for you for, for me i just need to know first of all the objective okay like what is so the, the what are we trying yeah. to extract yeah. out okay. of it yeah. 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 like yeah. what does my character want yeah um in the same way with class like what do i want yeah. out of the class and what do i want to give to the class and then i will work out the finer details from there okay to serve the objective but could you wing it can you wing it could i wing it i could improvise it yep as if I knew what my character wanted out of the scene, I could improvise my way through it. But um, there would be much more range and depth um, if I knew the beats of it. Okay, yeah. You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. But if, if you told me that the character's wants is they want this person, this other person to fall in love with them, that is where I would start. Yeah. Rather than, okay, this character should say this at this point, should say this at this point, should move over there at this point, touch them at this point. That's later for me. Where it sounds yeah, okay. like yeah, for you guys, you opposite. need to know that you got to be yeah. here at this point, yeah. here at this point, touch them at this point, um, and then. I wouldn't say that. I don't know if that's if yeah. that's it for you. I agree. I need to know the outcome. I want to know what we're trying to achieve with this mm. class. I want to know if this uh, trip... Uh, uh, sprint 27 that we just filmed how are we going to make it different from 26 so I need to know all those things but then I do need to know where am I going what am I going to say at what time so yeah, I, yep. I go wide and then I go really detailed and Same. then there comes a point where I can let it go like mm. okay I know what I want to say and even if I don't hit all the lines I know that I'm going to bring it across mm. well enough mm. but I need to get to that point where I just know it you know yeah mm. yeah what would your advice be for someone who was actually so engrossed in the specifics first and is now struggling to let it all go yeah then I I think that that, that could be two things one is they don't know it enough like up to that point where I really know it I'm that person I'm rehearsing it and I don't really know what to say and I, and I said it wrong and I forgot what to say. So I'm struggling up to that point. But there comes a point if you put in enough, if, if you put in enough practice where it's just so natural that you, that you can let it go. So it's either um, they haven't practiced enough um, or um, they, they, they might um, experience um, a, a lack of confidence mm. and then that needs to be addressed because um, if you're struggling not because you don't remember but because of your your confidence um, yeah then somebody needs help with that and I'm mm. be the first in line to raise my hand I could use help with that mm. <laughs> so what what advice would you give to those people you know who are lacking that confidence like how, how do you build that self I don't know I've been struggling with confidence not, never when I was practicing judo because it was so simple you know if I fell on my back I lost the game if if um, if I threw the other person on their back like I won mm -hmm. it's super black or white but then all of a sudden I became an instructor and all of a sudden it 
like people's opinion mattered, you know, like mm. somebody thought I was funny or w didn't think I was funny. Mm. Um, somebody was, uh, thought I was a good instructor. Somebody else thought I wasn't a good instructor. Like it was mm. all based on their judgment. It wasn't black or white at all anymore. And I really struggled with that, especially when I became a trainer in, in the Netherlands. I didn't have that so much when I became an instructor because I was just so new to it. Like my brain was just occupied with just doing the stuff that needed to be done. Like I didn't have time to think about, okay, how do I feel or whatever. Um, yeah, I've al always struggled. And I think I'm now at a point where I sort of almost accepted it. Like, okay, like um, not being super confident. I don't want to say I'm, how did, what is the opposite of confident? Shine. Unconfident? No, subconscious. No, not subconscious. Yeah, just um, not confident. Okay, not confident. Right? Okay. Well, let's just go with that. I will, okay, I don't <laughs> want to say I'm not confident because I think I've, I've learned a lot and, and that, that logic of like, I wouldn't be in this place if I, if I wasn't good enough, like that keeps me away from being not confident, mm. but I'm not as confident as I would like to be. And I, th I think I just accepted that. That makes me put in the work before filming, I don't know, to mm. make me what I'm now, you know, yeah, like yeah, because yeah. of that, because of lacking that super confidence, I might, I might spend five hours pre preparing him instead of two, you know, yeah. mm. and maybe that's, maybe that's what makes me stand out. I don't know. Yeah. 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 yeah it's funny, right? I, like, I th yeah, it is. Because I think for, I, I am also like, I lack confidence in some things and because of that, it makes, it raises my standard. Yes. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And if I was so confident that I didn't prepare, then I no longer care. You know yes, what I mean? Yes, yes, there, yes. There's a high yeah. risk of not reaching a yeah. standard anymore, yeah. Yeah. thinking that I could just come into a room and execute without any preparation. Yeah. Yeah. I think that fear of failure helps drive. Yes, I think so. I, I, and especially when it comes to language, because that's another barrier that I have. Um, I don't know, it makes me... It makes me, um, one of my friends said, like, because um, of course we, we speak about this, like, amongst each other, like, uh, uh, they said, when you teach, it's always so clear. And maybe that's because of my, um, my downfall that I don't own this language so well as others, you know, like, mm. so instead of, um, I can imagine being brought up in New Zealand and speaking English so fluently, like, you have all these different nuances of saying something, you know, mm. like, you instead, I can say, I can find two ways of uh, describing that, that uh, wall, you know. Mm. But you might find 12, you know, mm. but because I only have the basics, it is really clear. There's no discussion about it. Yeah. So maybe, um, so sometimes I think a dance or like a, something you struggle with, mm. if you're able to accept it, it can, can also be, be yeah, it can become yeah. your sp a strength yeah. because it pushes you in a different yeah. way than somebody who doesn't yeah. have that. I always thought that with instructors, especially with masterclasses when would have different international presenters, yeah. that I, I always thought that I thought their, their weakness to them, their perceived weakness is probably that they don't, that English is their second language and therefore they don't have, um, yeah, many words to describe something that an English speaking person yeah. would. But in doing so, they were always so clear and precise yeah. and said what was needed to be said yeah. and didn't. Whereas sometimes people like myself, you just blah, 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 yes. you're talking too much, yeah, yeah. and people are like, wait, what am I meant to be doing? She's just talking too much about yeah. whatever. So, but that's also, and that's where I think um, some some of, like some difficulties with um, international presenters come from is like you get into this room with these people that are so good, like all the people that I work with, I, I really see why they are good. Like that's the difficulty sometimes as well. Like I see why other people, are, I can give you a list of why uh, of why I think Ben is good or Aaron is good or anybody, you know. Uh, I just struggle with saying it about myself. I just don't know. But then you get into those room with those people that you already look up to and they just start talking in English and it sounds so good, especially for a Dutch person, you know, it sounds beautiful and they have these smart ways of, of like saying things in a certain way. And then you're there, that wall is white. <laughs> <laughs> And just you feel such a such a beginner speaking, not being able to speak in your own language, and it really reduces your your teaching ability for like for thirty percent, forty percent even. Um, I would argue. I would argue that does it reduce your teaching ability well, like because you're actually because let's say you you lack the nuances, you're much more clearer and more direct yeah. and more purposeful. Yes, but yes, but as an instructor, you also want to do the cool things, you know, like you don't always want to say chest stop, core brace, yeah, it, but really clear. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you want to you want to have the cool cues that people remember. Yeah. Um, mm. You want to have the cues that, that our instructors use in their own classes. You want to be an example of not just the basics explained really clearly. You want to, yeah, I don't know, mm. be an example yeah. better than that. Yeah. Yeah. 
I don't know. It's just, yeah, it's an interesting, mm. yeah. It's, I think a, a large part of that is finding your own, one, definitely knowing it inside out, that you can then let it go and yeah. then allowing your personality yes. to flourish. Yeah. What would your advice be for someone, you know, who was in the basket of like English is their first language, but they're still struggling to really let that part go? Um, what part? The personality, uh, you know. Like okay, yeah. I just think it comes down to not wanting it to do it too perfectly, or not wanting to do it like somebody else is doing. Mm. Um, I think, I think we're stepping away from that now with Les Mills. But there was a moment within this, um, not organization, but like uh, within teaching in general. I think like where everybody was really strict on following. I don't know the 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 blueprint of being mm. the best instructor. You know, everybody and uh, you basically tick like tick all the boxes. Uh, tick all yeah. the boxes and become. And I don't think like um, I think of people who inspire me. They inspire me for so many other things than ticking the boxes. Mm. I like um, I don't want to uh, throw out names, but I like. Um, yeah, my 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 group fitness heroes or people that I look up to. They often they necessarily have the perfect technique, you know, like mm. or it's just something that they make me feel. Mm. They're yeah, they make me feel something like I'm a sp- aspire, I aspire. I aspire. How do I say that? I aspire to them, or like yeah, yeah. like I think they're inspirational, um, or they make me feel something during the workout. Mm. Um, and that's not coaching, and that's not technique, and it doesn't matter if they do 16 burpees or 12 burpees. I really don't care. It's how they make me feel. Mm. And I think for people who struggle, I think they're too much into, I need to do it in the exact same way that I that I think I have it in my head. Mm. Mm. I love that there's difference, you know, like mm. um, if you look at me and Quran, we're quite different. Um, we have different styles. Um, we, we gravitate to different things, but I think that's the beauty of it. That's why she's so inspiring to so many. Um, and I might tap into a different audience, you know, like, mm. um, and that's okay, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Um, but it might take a while for people to get to that place where they, where they really feel that, yeah, okay, that is okay. It doesn't have to be exactly what I see on the videos or whatever. Mm. You just bring your own, like, like if your background is, um, I don't know, physiotherapist or whatever, like, or, you know, like PT, bring your PT background into, yeah. uh, into group fitness yeah. or your, your theater background, you know, mm. like, or wherever you grew up with or your background, you bring that into your, your teaching and your style of teaching. Mm. Mm. I think that is such a logical way to, to repeat that, um, cliche saying of just be yourself you know when yeah. people give you advice advice or uh, feedback and like you just got to be yourself yeah. and you're yeah. like what the fuck yeah, is cause, that yeah because yeah, it's the best advice but it's also the worst advice because yeah. the next question uh, so how do i do that i'm yeah. nervous as hell how am i gonna be myself mm. yeah. and then the next thing was like oh just instruct from the heart and you're like yeah what yeah, is yeah, that yeah, 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 yeah. you know um yeah. So how would you answer that question then? If I would say, <laughs> if you would tell me, um, uh, just be yourself and I would say, yeah, okay, great. But how do I do that then? What would your advice be then? I would get, and this is something that I do with my clients, is that I would get a piece of paper. I would write down my values, yep. my goals, and then bridge the gap between them. Okay. So, you know, so yeah. because if I wasn't clear on what I valued and where I wanted to go, then I would look at... For example, the DVD and be like, well, I'm going to write what I value in bus. You know? Okay, yeah, yeah. And yeah, try to yeah. be you yeah. rather than really identify what I want, you know? Um, yeah. Does that make sense? 100%, yeah. I would almost add another layer on top of that. I would almost ask also, like, what sits, what are yours, what are your, um, I don't know, like, um, the, the English word, what are your skills? Yeah, what makes you different to someone else and mm. what sits Yeah, and what sits naturally with you. Like, what yeah. are your, what, are, what is your difference? And again, that's really difficult for me to ask, but there are like some, some, some tools that, that could help with that. Because um, I see the problem with tapping too much in your values is that it becomes uh, not sincere, like not o- authentic enough. Like if I, I think I'm quite down to earth and... and um, yeah, like if I if I would say that, um, I might aspire to be very inspirational, mm. um, and I might have some examples of of peers or of people I look up to who are very inspirational, who have these beautiful one-liners, who who deliver them with passion, and I might like aspire to be that. But if that's ne- if that doesn't sit in my 
being naturally, I almost become this, like this fake version of a person who's trying too hard to be something that they're not. Mm, I agree. But then I would argue, is that really your value or was it a value that you thought you needed to have to be something? And I think that could be something that, that needs to go, um, uh, it's almost like something that needs to be discussed together. Like it could still be my value. I could still, I, I might still have a value of being, trying to be as inspirational as I can be or inspire other people. But I need to find a way um, that suits with me Mm. That works with me mm. instead of trying to have an example of somebody that I'm not. Yes. And just trying to do that in a I think you're trying to say that. So you're what you're trying to say is you come back to the values and you're finding a way to bridge that gap. Between your values and how this relates yeah, to Yeah, but for you personally or for mm. that person you're talking to personally. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. you might still we we might still do that differently. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I guess so. I guess so. Like even like for example, I value connection. Yeah. That is something that I value yeah. for myself whenever this is the reason why I wanted to help start this, this podcast yeah. was that we're able to have connected conversations like we are now. Um, and how I would try to translate that, not just in group fitness, but also in personal training, uh, the relationships that I have with my family, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like this overarching umbrella that is uh, consistent throughout the things that I do. Yeah. You know, so that's why it was important for me to isolate what does what does my own Solerio value? Yeah. And then how can I incorporate that consistently throughout all the areas of my life? Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that, that, that stuff can change, you know, mm -hmm. that stuff can change. Because what do you I, think? I, was saying, I can see where both of you are coming from because I think it's important to somewhat know yourself. If someone's telling you to just be yourself and you've been so used to just, you know, ticking boxes that you're like, oh, well, what am I? What do I bring to the table? Um, but I get what you're saying in that, like if you wrote down your values of like, oh, fun and energy and da, 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 you could be almost over the top trying to be those that it's yeah it's yeah. not you because you're like, just, oh yeah you're i'm fun so i've got to be really you're this. screaming so loud like, yeah uh, to yourself like i'm this fun person I'm, I'm motivational whatever the list is that you've made in your mm. head and you're you're starting to act yeah because then based i'm like, oh, on those act, yeah. act based mm. on my and values. it's not genuine anymore yeah versus mm. like you said maybe just tapping into like an experience what it is that makes me well, what what did it, what makes me different to you as an instructor? Like, what would you bring to the table that I wouldn't, or I would bring to the table that you wouldn't? Yeah. And like you said, maybe yeah, my physio background, I would bring that through my like education and knowledge that I might have versus you bringing yeah. through your theatre background type thing. Mm. Like that's something I wouldn't be able to do because yeah. I don't have that background. Mm. Um, yeah. But it yeah, and also that makes the, sense like the nuances, you know, like you both might still be motivational, but you might choose for one-liners and you might choose, uh, choose being motivational through eye connection or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, but it's, it's, I think the, the, the difficulty that I sometimes see with personal coaching or like these, um, these self-help books is that you start making a list of things you want to be and you start to act like that. And it's, it's, it's not a genuine way of being, you know, like you, mm. you keep telling yourself, I need to be, I need to be happy or I need to be happy or I need to be energetic. I need to be energetic. And it's this, it's almost going over the top. Like people mm. who, who are in that state of mind, uh, it's just, it's just not really relaxed to be with those people because mm. they're, yeah, you, I think people notice that, that it's uh, almost a layer, like mm. a shell they've created and maybe a very positive shell for them for, for a while. But I, I don't know. It's just, yeah. Mm. Also, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, get I, I think because I've done, I think I've done that before. Maybe one A module or something where we probably had to write down values, and I was like, fun, energy, da da da. But then I felt then I was being too over the top to try and be all those things. And that's when I was, I was like, well, I'm still not really being myself because now I'm trying to be super fun, yes. or super this or super mm -hmm. that, which is still wasn't this is exactly me. what I mean. Like, yes, yeah. So, mm. so yeah. that comes back to the question: just be you. Yeah. Okay. How do you do that? That's not. There's not a simple answer. It's not. Mm. Again, not ticking the boxes. Mm. It's bringing your passion, your background, your um, goals and values, but in a way that also suits your life at this moment. Mm. Yeah. Which will be different again, I guess, as well, week to week, month to yeah, month, what yeah, you're yeah, going yeah. through. Yeah. And mm. What I liked when I was 18, I don't like anymore. Yeah. You know, like yeah. mm. I once wanted to become a fire, a fire fighter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do that anymore. Mm, very interesting. It's an interesting, it's, it's, and it's I don't have the answer. The more I get into them. stuff that I think is really interesting, the more I, I learn that I I don't know that much. You know, like I'm, I, there's so much to learn, and I, I it's easier for me to find questions that I don't have the answer to than stuff that I can answer. Mm. I just start to understand 
more of what I don't want anymore or what I don't want to do anymore. Mm. Yeah. That, that's a great place to start. Yeah. And that's a great place. So like if someone was to write, I need to be more fun and energetic and then tried that and then felt that, you know, pretty inherently you feel that you're inauthentic and you're like, yeah. oh, fuck, that's too much. Yeah. At least you can cross that off the list, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Or find a different way of how to be more fun. Mm. Play around with it yeah. where it sits yeah. authentic yeah. to you. Mm. Yeah. And only you can answer that question for yeah. yourself, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I saw on your Instagram, bro, while I was um, stalking you, um, <laughs> that you talked about a story where you had to cover someone else's class. Yeah. And then you saw two people talking and then you came with this assumption in your head that they were talking bad about you. Yeah. But at the end of the class, they were actually like, that's the guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think that, that there's a theme there of, because um, there's a lot of instructors that can cover people or get in front of a group of yeah. people and you know they don't feel good enough, they feel they won't live up to other people's expectations um, and create these stories that actually hinder our confidence yeah. and our potential. Um, I'd, I was wondering if you could like speak on um, you know, how you manage that for yourself. Yeah. Like if you are going to go cover someone else's class like, yeah. and those thoughts come in, yeah. how do you make sure that you manage them to give it the best bars yeah. that you can? I think it comes down to doing the best you can and like really trusting that, that one, when you deliver a class, any class, you're doing the best way you can with the best intentions you have and understanding that that's not everybody's cup of tea. Mm. Um, I don't like all instructors or all instructor types, you know, mm -hmm. like, um, and that's not necessarily a personal thing. It's probably mm -hmm. more a personal thing for me because I don't like that, but, uh, yeah, yeah. So I think it comes back to coming in with the intention to do the absolute best you can, knowing that not everybody uh, will like your class and that's okay. So I think just already being okay with that and not being offended, if, if somebody doesn't like that, I don't think there's, a, there's another line they could cross, like they could disturb your class, you know, like I've seen that also like back home in Holland when you have to cover somebody and they're, they want to prove your, like, I don't know, like this weird group dynamics, you know, like the shouters in the room, like mm. they, um, but as long as they are not disturbing your class or they're just not liking it and you're not their favorite instructor, yeah, oh, that's fine, I think. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Just coming in with that intention, you're going to do the best you can. Um, but I was, uh, the, the class you're describing, I was taking over Glenn's class mm. and I have Glenn here as well, you know, like I look mm -hmm. up to him. So I, I even understand if people come to the class and they see me and they don't know me, even if they do know me, they might have Glenn here and me here. And that's mm. absolutely fine. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah, I still have those insecurities of like, I, I want to be liked by everybody. But at the same time, I understand that that's ridiculous. And I understand that, that that's never going to happen. It's still my aim and I'm, I'm, I can still be hurt. But all, already understanding the process of what happens. Okay, I want to be liked by people. Um, that person might not like me. I can see that in their face or what they say or uh, the feedback that they gave to reception or whatever. And then understanding that that's okay because I don't like every person. Mm. I'm mm. basically like everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, actually, I actually like almost all people. But uh, I have my favorite instructors as well. Mm. Um, and I would rather go to their class than to somebody else's class. Mm. Mm. Um, and again, that's not a personal, a personal thing towards them. It's probably more has to do with something with me you know mm. yeah mm. I, we saw recently as well that you just started um brazilian jiu-jitsu and you wrote that that was something that you had been holding off for a while yeah um why is that and what made you actually take that plunge because i think someone could be listening right now that's like oh i want to do this but you know i've been waiting for yeah. so long how come we're because it comes back to insecurities again yeah mm. holy yeah. shit why am we we're talking about insecurities so much so i was a black belt in judo mm. And um, I stopped when I was maybe like 22, I'm 36 now, so I, ha I haven't done judo or I haven't worn a judo gi or my black belt um, for like 10 years. So I moved to Japan and I thought this is the country of judo, you know? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so I'm going to get back into it. But that, at that time I was really busy, that was my first excuse, uh, a, a, a genuine excuse. And the second one is like, then all of a sudden I thought like, okay, this is the, this is the, the, the home of judo, you know, like everybody who's going to be in that dojo, they're going to beat my ass. Am I still, do I still deserve the black belt? Um, 
So, and it felt a little bit like, okay, maybe that face has, I always really liked it, but to wear a black belt, to wear my judo black belt into a judo class with people who have been practicing for the last 10 years and I haven't, it feels off, you know? It feels almost like going into a group fitness class when you haven't taught for 20 years, mm. everything has changed, mm. but you walk up and say, no, no, in my days, like yeah. back in my days. Mm -hmm. So I didn't do it then. So I knew that it had to be something different, but I liked, I liked, I like martial arts. I like the fighting. I like I like training hard. I like I like fighting um, when it when it's in a situation like this. Um, yeah, <laughs> not country. Country. I'm, a, yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, like a very friendly guy, I think. Um, but that's an aspect that I really missed from my childhood. So um, a friend of mine um, was talking that he was new to jiu-jitsu. Um, I decided to join, and I thought like. Now is the time. And it was actually a little bit daunting to start something like that again. Mm. Mm. Also with the pressure of, uh, like some people knew that I had a black belt in judo. But it's two separate things. I actually, today I got my blue belt. Congratulations. Yeah, like we, awesome. we had to do a test uh, today. So I'm not a white belt in jiu-jitsu anymore. Awesome, nice. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. what advice would you give to someone who was, you know, beyond the fence right now? Yeah. Know, wanting to do something that they're curious about so I, or get back into something that they used to be passionate in? So I wonder, like, is it is it valid? Are your insecurities valid? And I think my insecurity of wearing a black belt in the home of judo <laughs> with younger people who have been training their ass off for the last 15... I think that, like, I stand by that. I think it was a good decision for me. Anybody else might have said, no, you should have just done it. Like, why are you worried? And I, for me, that was a good decision. Mm -hmm. I think um, asking yourself, okay, I'm insecure about this, but does it come from a valid reason? Mm -hmm. If that's a yes, then, then, then don't do it. Yeah. If it's like, ah, I'm, I wonder what people might think. or what, like, For me, it all, yeah, I'm going back and forth. But um, evaluating where that feeling comes from and then deciding, am I okay with this at this stage of my life? Or do I want to break through this? And then you just have to, how do you say that in English? Like kick yourself up the uh, butt? Kick, or yeah, yeah, kick, yeah, yeah, kick yourself up the ass. D yeah, you actually <laughs> have to do that. You have to go over that point that feels uncomfortable. Mm. For me, opening that door, going to that place that was new, um, surrounded, like having to put a white belt on again, like almost felt a little bit like, like mm. that was when I was four years old, you know, mm. like. But those are the moments that are uncomfortable and you have to push through those to get to a better place. Mm -hmm. So, uh, recapping this Dutch left and right <laughs> story, I would say if a person is on the fence, ask yourself, is it all right to be on the fence now? Does it come from a place where it's actually the best thing to be on the fence now? Mm -hmm. If it's not, you have to get off there. I don't know if this makes sense in the English language. No. Get off the fence, get through that un uncomfortable phase and you, you, you have to push yourself through that. Mm. But, but that's the only thing that's going to help you forward. Mm. I think yeah. like you said before, when we're older, I think there's just so many more, you take on board those opinions and that's why I think it's so much harder when you're an adult to want to try something yeah. new that you, or eat that you yeah. either haven't done before or get back into something. Whereas I think as a kid, you're just sort of like, oh yeah, yeah I'll give that a go. Like there's yeah. no like, oh, what are people going to think of me? Yes. And what if, yeah. I, yeah. what if I don't pick it up yeah. well? And yeah. Yeah. It's almost like it needs to, because I understand why we have these feelings. Like if we don't ask ourselves what other people think, we are, would be really bad in, in groups, right? And, mm. and we are really, we are... Yeah, like, we wouldn't know how to behave yeah, around so, the yeah. tribe. Yeah, that's so important. If my daughters don't learn how to um, think about others and only do that, like they're going to be a derailed human being, you know? Because <laughs> um, initially I always thought like, it's so sad that we lose that ability of just doing something. Mm. But I actually think we need to... We need to lose it, but we need to find it back later in life in mm. a different way. Mm. Yeah. So that's what I see now with my with my daughter. She's two years old. She's fearless. She, yeah. I absolutely love it, and I wish she would never lose it. Mm. But I know she has to lose it and find her way back to it in a different way, so that we mm. can navigate life in a better way than just mm. this yeah. toddler that never grows up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, so. What does a normal daily routine look like for you, bro? Like, what do you do? What, do you have a morning routine? Uh, yep, I uh, wake up Izzy, my, uh, my daughter. Mm. Uh, we spend like maybe an hour together. If I don't go into the office, I try to go to the office three times. I spend some time with her. So uh, Maria, my wife, um, can have a sleep in, which is not a real sleep in because we have a newborn as well. So, mm. But she has a little bit more time for herself. Mm. Um, then I like to do a workout before breakfast because um, I'm best. 
before breakfast, I think. <laughs> um, and then I start work either from home or at the office. And it's quite diverse. Like I'm, I'm going from left to right and front and back and mm. exercise behind the computer, creating classes back or helping out with classes back to, behind the computer. It's quite um, versatile. Mm, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah quite different yeah yeah and how do you take care of yourself like what does self-care look like for boss um i stretch mm -hmm. <laughs> is that the right answer yeah 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 um yeah i don't know if i like the thing that i struggle with and that i've set myself as a goal for um i was still uh yeah we're still we, going no okay. we're still going um I would love to learn to live in the moment more. I'm very, I'm very future focused, um, up to the point where um, I'm preparing for one filming, and I'm already thinking, okay, but if the next one comes, how would I do that different? I'm always almost, almost mm. with my head at the next one, while this first one hasn't even happened yet, you know. Mm. Um, so I, I really struggle living in the moment, and I. Um, also, um, don't relate with the very floaty like mm. stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it needs to be practical, and I haven't found a way to do that. So I think self care for me would be learning or teaching myself how to enjoy the moment better. Mm. Mm. And I think I have become better over like in the last two three years. But I, 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 I wouldn't. If you would ask me, are you able to live in the moment? I would still say no. Mm. Yeah. Well, what so, have you done to get you better than where you were three years ago? Realizing that I'm not in the moment. So if I'm thinking mm. about Awareness. the next filming, yeah. So yeah, I, I, catch, my, I catch myself earlier. Mm. Um, yeah, I think that's the biggest shift that I've made. Like realizing that I'm on that train and I'm not enjoying the journey. Mm. Um, I'm only thinking about the end destination, which is really diff different from the conversation that we had at the beginning because I'm not really... I don't have... Mm. But yeah... Yeah, um, so yeah, bro, we love to leave our listeners with some practical advice. Um, I know that this episode is already full of them, um, but if you could leave our listeners with something valuable, ah, more to me, boss. Uh, eat your veggies. <laughs> uh, learn a different language. Um, well, I've been thinking about this a lot lately, and I think um, there's so much bad stuff happening in the world right now right like um there's a war in ukraine there's like um covid has 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 i think separated people like very much like there's i think we're living in a society that 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 is really against each other like there's it's so easy to find something that you're against with mm. and i think it's very it, it tends to be quite negative and i think there's a lot of people finding a way how to combat that or how to change that but i i've also really struggled with um Okay, so how do I do that then? And I think the only answer, or the only thing you have to do is using your talent, your personality to create something positive. And that's different for, for anybody. If you're into painting, make a beautiful painting that creates some positivity for a person who looks at it. Mm. If you're into acting, create a beautiful piece that, that, that gets people's thought out of the difficult st things that are happening. If you're an instructor, teach a really good class. But purposely use your talents to create a positive change in the world and i think if everybody would do that um it creates a better space mm -hmm. actively using your talents whatever it might be to make the world a, a little bit better mm. and i think um i don't know going through that process of like how can i how can i change something in a world that is so messed up at the moment you know mm. i think that's it mm. What a beautiful way to end. Mr. Yeah. Bas Hollander, thank yeah. you so yeah. much, brother. Thank you so much for inviting me. This is <laughs> so nice. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Yeah. Awesome, Bas. Can I stay